This new segment of the Suburban Radio Hour is brought to you by Click Air. Their team of certified technicians and electricians got you covered for all your heating and cooling needs. Click-air.ca, where comfort meets quality. Good evening, Montreal, to another edition of the Suburban News Hour. I'm Bill Wiseman, editor-in-chief of the Suburban, here with my friends and colleagues, Anthony Bonaparte, features editor Mark Blitbetter, sports editor. Uh, it was, as always, a busy week. Uh, pick up your paper. Uh, We've got the extension of the injunction protecting Jewish institutions for another six months this time. This is the longest injunction, the sixth judge. We're going to be talking to Chelsea St. Pierre later on about the kind of mess in Point Claire. Counselors are seeking Quebec's help to restore order. Um, Superior Court stays provisions of Bill 96 against the MSB. And Chairman Joe Artonia called it a significant, a significant win. Uh, you'll see why he thinks that. Uh, CSL Hampstead both passed new pro- anti-protest bylaws. Uh, there's been a, a, a serious critique of the CAC's mental health plan by Darcy McGee and Elizabeth Prass. And all the other news you need to know, the, the paper's rich in those stories. Most important story of the week for us is the Hippodrome and the Cavendish Link. City of Montreal came out, came out with a plan uh, that frankly is something that we can easily get behind it's it's very necessary it, it it it's a plan to develop the hippodrome site which as you may recall was uh, ceded to montreal for a, for a dollar by quebec over from 20 years ago the plan calls for some 20,000 residences affordable and social housing it could see a population of some 40,000 people um and really would create as the city said a city within a city, especially with the Royal Mount Project just up the street that calls itself the new Midtown Montreal. And this is really Midtown Montreal. But great concern was the lack of commitment to a Cavendish link, almost the lack of mention. And I'm very pleased that our special guest this week is Jimmy Zubras. Jimmy is special counsel to the mayor. He's got particular responsibility for Anglophone and cultural communities. And uh, I just have to add on a personal note, uh, there are we have differences with this administration, but uh, I must say that Jimmy... Uh, is very accessible, very effective, and has helped a great deal of people uh, and communities with individual issues. Jimmy, thanks for taking the time to be with us. Any time for you, Beryl. You know that. Jimmy, uh, I got to tell you, you know, except for language issues in Israel, I, I, I never, I think the number three biggest uh, mail-in issue is the Cavendish link. And ever since this plan was announced and the lack of specificity about Cavendish, uh, what West Enders are concerned about is you can only get into that whole area from the carry and without a Western access and egress, horrible traffic con- congestion. And there's a feeling around the West End that it seems what the West End is concerned about doesn't necessarily get the attention of City Hall. What about the Cavendish link? Well, first of all, you uh, mentioned it at the beginning that uh, we're moving really quickly right now on on uh, on the Blue Bond and Hippodrome site. So, you know, not only that it's one of the the last big untouched sites uh, on the city of Montreal, but it's also extremely important, especially for the development of that area. I, you know that area very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, how quickly it's growing. We have Royal Mount. Uh, the Carry Square is about to go through a huge renovation too, which is not the city of Montreal, but it's right next door. So. One thing, one thing we're sure is that when when the mayor, uh, with my colleagues, uh, mentioned that you know we're going through with this project, um, and I, I'd like to come back to it for a second. But she did mention Cavendish. She did say that for us, it's also necessary that Cavendish be done as well. But we can't stop the whole progress of the area to complete Cavendish. Cavendish is a very difficult project, as you know, Earl. There's a very uh, Earl. I'm sorry, I called you Earl. Oh, it's okay. Earl, we were talking. Earl's good, Anthony. You like Earl? What if I change my name to Earl? He called me Earl. Is we were talking we about like Earl. a common phrase Anthony, right before we got on there. Anthony likes Earl. <laughs> he likes Earl. Earl Wiseman. Let's go. No, no. Earl. I'm sorry, guys. He, did, he won't um, let me. He won't call me Earl the Pearl, though. So go ahead. That, sorry, Jimmy. That one's taken. Yeah. So we so we want to develop the area, right? And and uh, the first thing that was announced is at least uh, phase one, which would definitely be the extension or uh, you know Cavendish to go at least up to Jean Talon. And we're working on the other one, and we've been working on it for a while. And you know as well as I do, 
There are many factors involved, including dealing with with the rail company, which has never been easy. I mean, this product, you know, people have been talking about for Cavendish for as long as I can remember. No, I, but, 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 would, if I, if, yeah. sorry, sorry for interrupting, but let, let's come back to the issue of public perception, and I think that's important, as right. well as planning. Absolutely, mm-hmm. the project has to be started. You can't, you, you don't necessarily have to hold up the whole project to get Cavendish Link done, but it's... The Railman project was held up by TMR. There were concerns voiced at City Hall by Mayor Plant of traffic congestion. This is gonna, mm-hmm. this is gonna add to it. It's needed. This stuff is needed. It's not commercial. It's vital uh, housing, but the, it's a reality. There's not even a debate without the Western right. connections, which, as I said, Coates and Luke, T- and you know this, Coates and Luke, TMR, Ville Saint Laurent, they all mm-hmm. want it. Everybody's ready Much to go. West. Yeah. It, yeah. It, when the, and I've said this so often to you personally in in print, when a political leader says we're going to do it, suddenly the other political class, uh, other bureaucrats, you know, they, they wake up and say, okay, we now understand that this is a priority. Mm-hmm. Without without saying that, not not doing it tomorrow, but saying it, everybody's going to put it on the back burner, and we're going to have a traffic mess that that's going to be horrible. As much as we need no, this we're, we're, uh, no, it, there's a lot of options being looked at, and you know, as it's going on, there's going to be different things that come through. Even when Royal Mount, right, which was in, in town of Mount Royal, we worked with them to try to help, um, you know, alleviate some of the traffic and even, you know, people coming over, walking over and everything. So it's it's part of the plan. And it, it's for us, it is a priority. Like it's something that people are working on. It hasn't been left behind. So is the, ta- uh, is, the is the takeaway that the city understands that the Cavendish link is important as as the, as a major factor to relieve traffic congestion and to make this a viable yeah. project, especially with the amount of of housing and the amount of businesses that are now going to go on to carry, I think it's going to be it's got to be priority. It's got to be like a like something which we have to work on, uh, you know, all together. Which I think we are as much as possible uh, with the agglomeration and with the different levels. But you know. There's a lot of factors, Earl, and it's a very, very technical thing. Well, again, it's very important for a political leader to talk about it, mm-hmm. even to say, you know, we're going to do the mm-hmm. Cavendish link. Obviously, we have work to do to get at the technicals. Mm-hmm. From what you're saying, that there's under, there is an understanding at City Hall and there's an understanding by the mayor of the importance of Cavendish to make this project effective and, and not to have horrible traffic congestion. Can we hope to hear her say those words as time goes on about Cavendish Link, which which was part of the conditions yes, for, is, uh, for the session of the land to begin with 20 years ago was given to Montreal for a dollar. One of the conditions was the Cavendish Link. Even Quebec understood that 20 years ago. Can we can we expect to hear more words on this subject? And by the way, some traffic studies. I think the traffic studies do exist, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not, I'm not an expert on it, but I think... I think that that's something that you're going to be hearing a lot of because I expect that there's going to be a lot of announcements in the next uh, a little while, uh, next while uh, concerning uh, development in that area. Because look, uh, it, it was the first time uh, I think in a long time where I've seen where everybody was at the table. We're talking about the federal, the provincial, municipal, and even uh, that committee we created, which is you know and some of the major players in the city of Montreal. We're sitting all around the table yep. saying, "Hey." We're all going to work together to get this done. Well, uh, the Gallup group, which was headed by Pierre Boivin, so well, I some think it's of, some, extremely important. You, I don't have to tell you, some of those major pl- players are a bit frightened, skeptical, whatever you want to call it, frustrated that they're not hearing more on this. And what I'm hearing from you is that the mayor understands the importance, and what I'm hoping to hear from you is, or to see in the coming weeks and months, is that she will underscore this because the words of the highest elected official in the city count. Yes. Jimmy Zuru, Jimmy Zuru, special counsel, the mayor. I thank you very much for your time and for all the work you do. Thank you, sir. Thank you. As they say, from Jimmy's mouth to God's ears, but I'll take him at his word, and uh, uh, we'll wait to see. Uh, I've we've asked for that traffic study, and, uh, and we'll wait to see what that has to say uh, about the the link and about the, the possible congestion. The municipal scene was certainly hopping this week, and and, and Point Claire seems to be just constantly like, uh, you know, putting popcorn in the microwave and hearing the pop, 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 pop. You never know what's going to happen in Point Claire. Chelsea St. Pierre is with us, and Chelsea, what the hell happened in Point Claire now that the councillors voted to bring Quebec in, involved to restore order in a, in a small municipality? Yeah, well, I, I mean, you said it. 
correctly, it's every council meeting, every public meeting, um, it, it's like, you know, you never know what's going to pop up next. Um, and they're, you know, they're sort of at each other's throats, so to speak. Um, and uh, the mayor and the majority of his councillors are in a constant disagreement. Um, and the mayor has the, has the idea that uh, his councillors are against him. And the uh, councillors have the idea that they're trying to uh, encourage the mayor to work within a certain order and that uh, he doesn't want to follow suit. So, I mean, both sides have their story to tell. And uh, finally, uh, Kelly Sorsat Cullen, uh, one of the uh, city councillors, uh, uh, you know, put out a motion for the Quebec Municipal Affairs Department to intervene um, so that they can uh, come up with an analysis of the situation uh, and uh, formulate an action plan to help restore order. Um, now, what did so the council voted seven to two? I believe was the vote, or five to two. That's right, seven to two. Uh, uh, the only now, two holdouts were uh, Mayor Tim Thomas and uh, City Councilor Bruno Trombley. Uh, what exactly have they asked Quebec for? They haven't asked for trusteeship. They've asked for mediation. Well, that's the thing. When you when you ask for that, I mean, trusteeship is no longer up to you. It becomes it's up, up right. To you that's then. what I gathered. Yeah. So they'll decide if the if you know once they come up with an analysis and they give them uh, some sort of opportunity to uh, restore the situation. Um, but if it if it doesn't if the situation is not restored as a result, then trusteeship is automatic. So they might have put themselves in a position where their independence as a municipality is uh, going could be in the air, be up in well, the air. Yeah, and t- well, Tim Thomas says that's his reason for his holdout is because he doesn't think that putting the municipality at risk of a trusteeship is uh, is is a good option. Now, so, count- uh, Councillor Stainfor has has put out on um, on um, social media, and thank you, Mark Lidbetter, for showing me this uh, a statement that. She doesn't want trusteeship, but again, as you said, it's not up to her or them anymore. No, none of nobody wants trusteeship, um, and that's not the ultimate goal. Uh, but they really and and they they the counselors are equally afraid of that result. However, they've reached the end of their rope where they don't see any other solution, so they're willing to take the risk. And what's the what's the timeline here? What's the process to, to play out? I'm not sure about the timeline. I mean, the analysis will take, you know, I, I'm not sure how long the analysis takes. Once that's done, uh, you know, the, the, the scenario can be different depending on what the analysis decides. If they say, well, okay, this is what you need to do. You have 30 days to do it. They could say 60 days. They could say a year. We don't know. We'll find out uh, once that process is done. How long that process is exactly, Burl, I don't know. This is going to be a story you're going to follow and we're all going to watch because the the, the, the possibility of Quebec, <laughs> uh, um, the possibility of this Quebec government taking over a West Island municipality at it's a time of... Uh, well, well, no, 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 listen, this is this is grist for our mill. We're in the news business. We're also in the entertainment business. Sure. Um, between, between the language laws and everything else, um, I, Anthony is, 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 is chafing at the bit to say something. About Anthony, as as Cavendish, uh, a link being uh, completed uh, within uh, our lifetime. But don't you think that if Quebec guides Point Claire with, <laughs> you should see his face in Montreal. I wish. Now, uh, we're, <laughs> let's be fair to, right, Anthony? We're, we we believe that our provincial administration has bon foi. Okay. Sorry, I can't keep a straight face. I can't keep a straight face. That's not my phone. Uh, but can you can you imagine that the endless things that they could do they'll use point they might use point claire as a sort of testing lab for language laws for quota systems it, it, it's like it's like you know giving a whole bunch of lego sets to kids who didn't get yeah, well, their there's riddle. lots of street names that would need some fixing right because uh, street names of course be, uh, <laughs> so, for starters, I'm well, sure that, but most that, po- that would be priority number one. And, and most of Point Claire is in Saint-Joachin's Parish. 
Right. Yeah. The Point Claire Village. Yeah. Right. So what are they going to do about the fact that they want, you know, secularism on the one hand, but I don't know, they might they might take umbrage at that. They'd be tilting at the windmill on do, the point. Do you hear? You got Lidbetter started. They'd be tilting at the windmill. Uh, well, the windmill, yeah. So, I mean, the municipality decided to, you know, voted on uh, giving a million dollars to a private Catholic organization because, I, I don't know, I guess they're going broke. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> We'll see what we'll see what we're, happens. We're going to follow this just very briefly. Uh, another very important story, and it's and it's online now, and it'll 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 be front page this coming week. They're really ranking up uh, again. Uh, for the com- good on the community in Lachine for doing it. Bad that they had to put this kind of pressure on. But again, we've had demonstrations from Lachine hospital staff, uh, the, the mayor of Lachine. The MNA for Lachine, uh, the CSN got involved to open the ICU. So last year, Lachine Hospital lost its ER. Uh, there were there were protests to reopen it. Uh, Lachine is part of the MUC, M-U-H-C, but they didn't reopen the ICU. Somehow nobody got the memo yeah, that well, you can't run an ER without an ICU. So here we had another uh, protest a few days ago, and this one really brought out the the the. the, the, the public officials, the political leadership, the labor leadership, um, they really hope to get this resolved. And who are they looking for to resolve it? Just the MUHC? Yeah, the MUHC, I mean, at the end of the day, is the the decision maker on this. I mean, you know, they might argue that they need more funding from the Quebec government uh, in order to pull this off. But I mean, it's not that there isn't an ICU at the Lachine Hospital. There is one. And, uh, it's just limited it's, hours. No, it's the room is empty. empty There's no staff, not. Okay. so it's not being used. Uh, the, the hour, you know, at one point, yeah, the hours were limited, and then the ER was limited, and then it was closed, um, and then it was closed to ambulance, like you know, closed to ambulances. I mean, and uh, and then when when they did the demonstration last year to reopen the ER, that's fine, but now it only operates at sixty five percent capacity because without an ICU. You can't uh, keep those patients, but transferring them is dangerous because it's they're, it's they're a, people it's in need impossible. of intensive care. Chelsea, we're up against the clock. Thanks for your great work and your great stories. Maybe you should get a maybe you should call the MUHC and ask them what uh, what their plans are, and if they want uh, you know if they want something from Quebec, maybe we can help them along. Uh, well, Chelsea St. Pierre, thanks very much for your time, and thanks very much for these great stories. Thanks. I'm Beryl Wiseman, editor of the Suburban, and we'll be right back after we go to the CJD Traffic Center. This new segment of the Suburban Radio Hour is brought to you by Click Air. Their team of certified technicians and electricians got you covered for all your heating and cooling needs. Click-air.ca, where comfort meets quality.